Everybody wants to retire, but there are certain things that you must do. If you don't start thinking about these things, you may not stay retired that long and you may end up back to work. So really, I'm going to focus on the 55 year old. A lot of these things are going to apply to everybody, though. There will be a few that I point out that will be specific for the person retiring before 59 and a half. So the first one that we have to talk through is health care. This is a stressor for everybody when it comes to retirement. Well, Benzega, Benziga, not really sure how to pronounce that, but uh, they put out a report says the average 65 year old retiree will need $128,000 for healthcare expenses. That's a male and 147,000 for females because they're going to live longer. If you're going to retire at 55, you will have COBRA once you separate from employment for up to 18 months. From there, you're going to have to go to the marketplace, figure something else out. Oftentimes people are doing the Affordable Care Act now, but they're wanting to make sure that they strategize to keep their income low enough because if your income is not super low and you have a higher income, you're going to pay a lot more for healthcare costs. So that's something to figure out, especially if you're retiring in the 55 or even before Medicare years, which start at 65. Now, the second one we want to think through is your withdrawal strategy. When you're retiring, if you retire at age 55, you will be able to access your 401k if you separate from employment in the year you turn 55, as long as your 401k plan allows it. The IRS says that you can pull from your 401k as long as you have hit 55 or retired in the year you turn 55 without a 10% early withdrawal penalty but some employer plans do not allow this. So make sure you're reaching out to your employer plan to check. You may have built up a bridge account. Maybe you know that you're gonna retire at 53 and it's going to carry you all the way to 59 and a half and you're going to have a taxable brokerage account or what often people are calling a bridge account when they are retiring early. Another option that you do have is touching the principal dollars in a Roth IRA. It's not the best advice, I would say, because oftentimes we want that Roth IRA to be able to continue to grow and compound tax-free on all of those gains. But if you're in a tight spot and you need a little extra money and you have the principal balance in the Roth IRA that works, just remember not to do a Roth conversion and then pull the money out if you're before 59 and a half, because there's an early withdrawal penalty there as well. They actually get you on that because you have a five-year clock on that before 59 and a half if you're trying to do the conversions. We've had clients that have talked about this and said, hey, I'm retiring at 55. I'm going to convert money over and then pull that money out immediately and be able to access it. That's not the way it works. So just make sure that you're keeping up with that and not making the wrong mistake there. The third one is expenses. You know, everybody wants to sit there and talk about how much they've saved for retirement, but you've got to do a budget. You've got to figure out things. We always talk about working backwards, figure out how much you will need in retirement. Then we can figure out how much you need to save for retirement. And so that's what you want to really look through. Break down your budget, first of all, and just what you need. So your, you know, your primary expenses that you're looking at, then you can look at your discretionary expenses or things that you maybe you want. So everybody wants something in life, wants to vacation, do all these different things, but really focus on first what you need to keep the roof over your head, the food on the table, and then start to build in the other things and then start to calculate, okay, what does that look like comparing my expenses versus what I'm actually have already saved? So that's one thing you really wanna factor in. So many people that we talk to when we start a financial plan, we ask them, all right, well, how much do you need to retire? Well, they don't know. They just say, well, I've, I've got, you know, $500,000. Well, $500,000 is great. But if you need, you know, $100,000 a month, $500,000 isn't going to last you that long. So we've got to think through that. The fourth thing is the investment strategy, along with having just your money and saying, okay, I've saved 500,000 or a million dollars. How are you investing that money? Because that's also going to drive how much you are going to get off of those investments. If you invest in an aggressive manner, you know, historically the S&P 500 is done between, let's just say nine and 10%. It depends on the day and what you're looking at, but roughly nine to 10% is the S&P 500. If you're needing a 9% return to be able to provide your income, that's one way of looking at things. Maybe you're super conservative, but you have too high of expenses. So you've really got to factor in what your investment strategy is going to be. Not only that, but when it comes to the investment strategy, you also want to think through maybe the IRA accounts, the first thing you're going to use, and you're going to have it a little less aggressive, knowing that there's going to be some bumps in the road. And you may have to pull from your money, even though the market is down, you don't want it to fall down too much. On the other side, we talk about the Roth IRA, oftentimes being the last 
IRA or, raw, or account you're going to touch. So that could be really aggressive so that it can continue to grow long term. You don't have to worry about that. So that's all stuff to think through when it comes to the investment strategy. And finally, number five, you know, everybody's going to give you just the, the, the idea of, oh, well, you need a financial plan. And I'm not going to tell you that you have to go with a financial planner. I'm probably one of the only guys doing financial plans that won't tell you that. But the reality is, is you do have to have some sort of roadmap going through the retirement years to really figure out making sure that your money is going to last. You want to factor in how much you need, as we talked about the expenses. You want to figure out how much you've already saved. You want to figure in what is social security going to pay? You wanna figure out what are your projected returns on your investments, 5%, 8%. That's a big difference, especially when you're talking retiring at 50 and potentially living until 90. There's a massive spread there depending on what your returns are going to be. You also want to factor in volatility or the ups and downs in the market. And you wanna think about inflation because inflation is something that is going to definitely be here. It may only be 2% like the Fed wants, but we have to realize that sometimes it may be much higher than that. So those are all different things that you wanna factor in. Now, I'm sure there's something that I probably missed in this video that you're thinking of right now that say, wow, this will be super helpful for others. So be sure to leave that below in the comments. Mm -hmm.